All right, Paul, so we just spent the last section looking at the geology of the planet, you know, volcanoes, craters, what's on the ground, but, you know, we live here on Earth, we have this nice big atmosphere, so what about the atmospheres of not just our planet, but everything in the solar system? Yeah, so this lesson we're going to talk about atmospheres and temperatures. So let's start off by thinking what temperature different planets are. Okay. Now, this is a little problematic because different parts of planets at different temperature. Do you mean the middle of a planet? That's the true. surface of the planet? High in the planet's atmosphere are going to be different temperatures. Yes. So we normally mean the surface of the planet. And do we talk about the average surface of the planet or a particular point? Well, one problem is, of course, things like Jupiter, which don't have a surface. Yep. So the deeper you go, the hotter it goes. You can pick any temperature you like. Okay. Um, so that makes it a bit tricky. Okay. Uh, but here's basically, I, I've attempted to put together a graph showing the temperature of basically all the planets and moons and asteroids and everything like that. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Okay. So for the gas giants, I've said the temperature when you're deep enough that the atmospheric pressure is about the same as the Earth's atmospheric pressure. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Take your, I mean, you pick any temperature you like. Um, but also what I've shown is the range of temperatures. So you see the vertical lines, because a lot of planets, the temperature's not always the same. Well, I mean, on Earth we know that, right? Yes, central yes. Australia is very different than, say, Antarctica. And Central Australia in the middle of summer is very different from Central Australia in the middle of winter. <laughs> um, okay, so here are the temperatures, and you can see that they more or less get cooler as you go further away from the sun, as you'd expect. And some planets have bigger extremes compared to others, though. Yes, there's a couple of surprises here. First of all, you see that the second object out, Venus, is way hotter than it should be. Yeah, and this is always this question, right? People always think, you know, what is the hottest planet? Mercury, it's the closest, but this is not even close. Yeah, Venus is way hotter, and it doesn't vary very much. It's pretty constant temperature, but look at things like Mercury. Yeah. Or over here, we've got the Earth and the Moon. Um, but the Earth's temperature doesn't vary that much, but the Moon's varies enormously. Yep. So what you've got is two surprises, if you like. One is that, why is Venus so much hotter than you expect? Yep. And secondly, why do you get such a huge range in some planets and moons mm. and asteroids? So Venus, hell planet, uh, very cloudy, uh, the temperature over 400 degrees all the time. That's right. Uh, not a nice place to live. And then you've got things like the moon and Mercury and asteroids where the temperature ranges enormously. On the moon, it can get up to plus 120 during the day. During night, it can easily be below minus 120. Yep. And some of the polar craters on the moon, it can get down to over minus, more than more, minus 200 degrees. So also kind of not a great place either, because it's not like you're spending all of that time at that balmy 20 degrees. It could be yeah. a temperature swing of 300 degrees is a lot. That's right. So what we're going to investigate in this is what determines the climate of a planet? Why yep. are some hot and cold? Um, where do the atmospheres come from? And how do the atmospheres and the temperatures interact with each other? Okay.